I'm Eric Perkins. Welcome to our YouTube channel about construction stuff. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about the thought processes and the methods that Jamie and I used to get through some of the trickier bits of the trim work out at the Nantahala Retreat, which is the house we're building right now. And we didn't get this in some of our regular video releases, but I thought you could learn a lot from it. And that's why we're making this video. So I hope you enjoy. Okay. What whoa, else we got? Hey, whoa, whoa. <laughs> easy with the camera. I'm not ready yet. Okay. Golly. All these ceilings, we've got the trim around the edges. And there was a couple really interesting things. The first thing you might want to note is that it's it's flat against the ceiling. Why is that? It is. I think we started doing that because I knew that we had solid wood to nail to everywhere. Yeah. Most of the time there is a double top plate in the wall, but not always. It just looks better. It, and the other thing is it's flexible in this direction. So like the paneling is a little jaggy, like up and down. Yes. That's, you can flex the trim to be tight. That's a big deal because there might be some irregularities, let's say in the wood surface. And there might be some irregularities in the drywall surface, but I would dare say there's more in the wood surface. I would and dare say. <laughs> I would dare say. The flat part of the board can bow in and out and yeah. conform, and you can nail it and hit it with your hammer and beat it tight. Whereas if you turn it the other way on edge, mm -hmm. it can't so, conform. So that's important, and we wanted to point that out because I see a lot of people do the trim against the wall. And I think the struggle factor is more. I think so. And it's actually, it makes the trim look like it's more part of the ceiling mm -hmm. and not like a thing that I'm trying to add to accent the ceiling. I don't know if that makes sense. It's not a crown molding. It's just, per, it's, it's only purpose is cover to cover. Yeah, it covers the, uh, the edges where we left it about a quarter inch short everywhere on purpose. Also, it covers some of the nailing on the edges. And actually that wider surface on the wood surface gives you more coverage of your nailing wow. that you did around the edges. There's a lot of reasons. I mean, I could go on. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Hey, here was the pro tip of the day yesterday that we missed, okay? Doing a long piece of trim like this where you have a sort of a complicated cut at both ends and this is a 90 degree outside corner, so it's kind of multi-faceted cut. And we wanna get that to fit on both ends in one shot because it took us about 20 minutes or so to make this outside corner in one piece and glue it and brad nail it together, sand the corner around so we didn't wanna, you know, screw it up <laughs> and ruin that piece. So what I did was I took a scrap piece, I cut uh, a top piece and I mm -hmm. cut a bottom piece that fit. And that took me a couple tries. I actually started by just guessing on the angles and the lengths and fitting. And so I kept shortening and shortening. That's what you don't wanna do to the finished one piece that you have left, okay? So once I had the angles and all the, all the cuts fitting on both ends, I actually tacked these into place and I had measured one foot from the long point to there, tacked them into place, I measured between, and then I added two feet back, matched the angles on this piece and it fit. And I don't know any other way that you could really do that without messing it up or doing it in two pieces. So we'll get a little B-roll of, yeah, it worked. There's more. There's more. <laughs> Even though it took a little bit of time to fit the ends on both ends, it took more time because it was a outside corner piece. But we still thought that would be worth it, even though it's a little more effort to make this piece in one piece ahead of time. I think it looks better. It's a better overall finish look than having like a lap and then a cover piece this way. You know, um, so, so yeah, we the miter joint. Mitered. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. miter joint looks better. You I think. You ought to do that if you want it to look good. Oh! <laughs> One bit of progress that was pretty challenging, we want to highlight, or low light, I'm not sure which one, was where these trim pieces had to terminate into the fireplace stonework there and there. Why don't you tell us about that, Jamie? I will. You have to decide what piece of trim you have to start with when you're doing these ceilings like this, because it's kind of like the order of operations. You know, the little, uh, I think we said this before, the little, you know, what you call it? Wait, this isn't math class. When here. you're doing a math equation, we had to start here because this is one of the most difficult places and I, I like to start with the most difficult things so that I can end in an easier place when I have to have a critical length measurement. Um, True. Wow. I had to decide, okay, am I going to cut my wood to fit the irregular surface of the stone here? 
at an angle, or am I gonna remove the stone and actually insert the wood there? And <laughs> That's nuts. Yes. Yes. Cut. All right. Okay. All right, well, Duh. this is a real stone, by the way. This is this is evolved stone that you can actually cut with a saw. So, before he inserted the wood, okay, he cut the stone. Pull it together, man. I decided to get a close fit, so I fitted the wood actually pretty close to the stone shape, and then I scored around the edge of the wood precisely with the edge of my chisel, so that I could see where to cut the stone. And so then I, I used my little buzz saw, the little oscillating tool, to remove that area, and then I could slide the wood in. And that way, the end of the wood cut didn't have to be really precise. Yeah. And, and, and he did struggle. I saw you break a couple pieces. And, yeah. Uh, I, cut, I cut it too short, too. So this is the second long piece that I had to make. I cut it a quarter inch too short. Yeah. I thought it was a quarter too long, actually, when I cut that piece. I was wrong, though. Bring the lantern. Bring the lantern. <laughs> Quit looking at it. Here's another interesting spot that we did something different is right here. There's actually two layers of this backer board to match up with this three quarter inch thick paneling so that our bull nose can lap just across onto the wood, just a fuzz. Fuzzy. So that was another spot. And also behind this board, what'd you, what'd you guys do? Okay, I know what you did. <laughs> So this tub has a tall flange. Oh, well, you yeah. should have turned that wall up. You're pointing yeah. way up here, bro. If you were to point down there, we'd have told you what we did. The flange is like yes. that tall. We're doing a lot of this this morning, yeah. yeah so tub. we could not stop the backer board on top of the flange. There was too much gap. We didn't want to have to like chisel out the back of the backer board. That's terrible. Impossible. And so we don't want the backer board to pucker out because then laying the tile on the shower wall is terrible. And it looks stupid. It looks stupid. So what we did is actually furred out every stud on these wall surfaces with eighth like inch. an eighth inch uh, Shim. shims so that the backer board actually went right down over the flange without swooping up. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a long explanation. Yeah, it was huge. But you know, if you're doing something like this, expect the struggle to happen, like little things. Yeah, but you adapt, overcome the situation. That's what I do. Anyways. It's amazing to me, no matter how many houses you build, it seems like you always run into new scenarios. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this post right here was a real tricky bit to trim out, and there, I don't think there's a textbook way to do this. Uh, this post actually has two roof lines intersecting with different pitches, and so you just gotta dive in, start finding somewhere to start, and start cutting pieces and fitting them together. That's what I did, and it was a little tricky, but we got her done. Well, one thing was the post is super twisted. Like it's squared up to the house down there, but up here it's like twisted around compared to the base. And so all these pieces are like- <laughs> They're all custom. They're all like custom I at literally angles. was up there with a, a saw and my pocket knife and a chisel and just like cutting each one <laughs> a little bit at a time and testing it and testing it and fitting it until it was fitting, you know, uh, reasonably acceptable and then shoot it. I'm glad that's done. That's good progress. Me too, I was actually dreading it. Also, this post had to be sanded and it needs to be polyurethane and what better time Ooh, so than nice. when you already have your scaffolding set up so you can reach yep. the top. The last one I did, hey, we forgot to do it until way <laughs> later. So I had to put an extension ladder and every time I had to come up and down, I had to climb all the way down like 20 something feet. So What's cool about this is it looks really rough, like with saw marks, but it feels really smooth, it's crazy. Oh, it's buttery to the yeah. touch. So we're gonna put polyurethane on that and leave it kind of rustic looking. Anton did that. He sanded this whole thing. I'm glad he did. He did, and he did a great job actually. It looks yeah, fantastic. He did. Hey, why is Jamie leaving? Uh, they're gonna do some staining. We're gonna do some tile. <laughs> hello, 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 anybody? <laughs> Looks like it's just me and you, bud. <laughs> what in the world, bro? I know I should've got sick this morning. Hey, thanks for checking out our video today. I hope you learned something. If you've enjoyed this video, you maybe should check out the rest of our playlist on building the Nantahala Retreat. It'll show you how we did everything from the ground up. And also, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to get subscribed, give us a thumbs up, and click the notification bell so you'll get all of our future videos as we release them. We'll see you on the next one.